Most tennis players don't have a game plan when they step out onto the singles court. And this video is going to help you define each stage of a singles point and how to have a plan, a personalized plan, just for you. So let's get started. The very first thing I want you to understand is when you're playing a singles point, that singles and or any part of tennis is predicated on the person or your opponent making mistakes or you making sure that you're not the person making mistakes. That's the base thing. We want to make sure we're not making mistakes and we give our, op our opponent opportunities to make mistakes. The second thing is when you take it to the next level, it's about forcing your opponent to hit difficult shots. Very, very rare, if not ever, are you trying to go out and trying to hit a winner. There's a phase or a stage in a match where you might be trying to hit a winner, but it's because you've earned the right because you've worked your way through these different stages. And I'm gonna explain what they are. But the first thing we wanna wrap everything around is that tennis is about not making mistakes, not being the person who's gonna make the unforced error. And then we wanna start thinking about how can we structure every point to make sure it's in our favor. And if we have this in mind, when we start going through the four phases of a tennis point, you can see how in different phases, you might have an advantage or disadvantage, and you can figure out how to turn those disadvantages into advantages. And what are those four phases? The very first phase of any tennis match is the start, meaning either you're serving or returning. And the idea is that we want to start the point. Now, that's the base level, but the next level is we want to start the point and tip it into our favor. So what that means is as a server, I want to place the ball so hopefully it comes back in a way that gives me an advantage. And I think this is a very different mindset than most players have. They tend to think, I'm going to ace you so the ball never comes back. Now, on the surface, this sounds good. So if you've ever heard of something called second order consequences. So second order consequences is thinking about what's the effect of the first order action. And so to make this really simple, if you have a chocolate cake and you eat it, that's a first order consequence or a first order kind of thought, meaning that First order is like, mmm, chocolate cake tastes good, mmm. But second order consequences states that basically six months down the road, your butt's gonna be big. A different first order consequence would be a salad or a carrot or something else that would be not, maybe not taste as good in the first order, but the second order, man, you're looking good, you're healthy, you're, your body's responding great. So we gotta think this way in tennis. So a first order thinking is, go for the big serve, it won't come back. But then we have to hit a second serve that we have to dink in. See? So what we want to think is instead, how can I use my serve to make sure when it comes back, it comes back in a way that's either weak or in my favor. So you can see players like Roger Federer serving out wide to set up his forehand. He's thinking on the second order consequence of the effect he's trying to impose on his opponent. Yeah, he may hit a couple aces, but guaranteed he's thinking about the setup more than he's thinking about the ace. Now let's think about the other side, which is returning. When we're thinking about returning, too many times we're thinking like, I'm gonna hammer this ball you know, and we make a mistake. Or uh, I'm gonna try to do this big swing and see, uh, we, again, second versus first order consequences. And we wanna think in second order consequences. We wanna think of if you can't get the ball back, it's like a double faulting. So we wanna do anything we can. If we need to block the ball back, if we need to move uh, far behind the court, if we need to shift over to force our opponent to go here, you gotta take all these things into account if we need to get the ball back. And this is the start phase. So as we go through these phases, I want you to keep in mind because we're gonna come back around and make a personal plan for you at the end of this video. The second phase is the rally phase. This is after we get the serve in, then we're gonna rally. I picture this as like a boxing match where you're going around and you're kind of like looking for those opportunities to throw your blow, you know? Ah, come on, we're working around, ah, fast feet. That's kind of what we do in tennis. We hit the ball back and forth and see if by hitting the ball back and forth, either your opponent's gonna make a mistake or they'll hit your weaker ball or go for too much, or maybe they hit a winner, whatever. We're, the idea is send the ball back and forth, not hit a winner. And I'm gonna keep coming up with this because I see so many players in this rally phase, they're trying to hit winners. They're like, hey, let's go for winners. I love players, by the way, if I'm playing against you and you try to do that, because I'm just gonna keep the ball in and you're gonna make a lot of errors and I'm gonna win. And this is why, because you're trying to do the wrong thing in the wrong situation, the wrong time. And so what we wanna think about is, what are the patterns we wanna use? Whether that means going cross court, whether that means changing directions down the line, but safely, whether that means going for an angle if you have an opportunity and the ball's maybe a little bit slower, this is the thing you want to think about, the amount of risk. We want to make sure when we're rallying, we have an idea that we're not trying to end the point. 
And again, we're going to come back around and think about certain patterns you could use that would favor your game. The third thing is the opportunity. This is when I've been rallying back and forth and maybe I get a short ball. Ooh, there's an opportunity here. Not a winner, that's an opportunity. There's an opportunity to get to the next phase, which we'll talk about in a second. But opportunity means we get a ball that's either slower or shorter in the court, which allows us to do a little bit more, meaning place the ball uh, when we didn't have the option of placing the ball before. It means uh, maybe approaching, which we didn't have that option before. But again, you hear, haven't heard the word winner yet. You haven't, it hasn't come out of my mouth. But now if we're approaching and we're moving towards net, woo, we're in the finishing zone. As we're approaching net, you generally have one or two options. The ball's gonna be above the net, hence you can finish the point or put a lot of pressure to make your opponent finish the point or the ball's below the net, which you're still kind of in the opportunity to maybe hit the ball deep and get another ball this high. The nice thing and why you start to hear the word finish is because at the net, you have a different perspective. Suddenly, from back here, if we're looking over the net, we can't see any of the court, but as we get closer and closer to the net, we get to see more of the court, meaning we have more access to the court, which means we have more direct access to finishing the point. This is now when we want to start thinking about what is the personal patterns in place we want to use. If we go back to the start, we want to think about where do I want to return or serve the ball to make sure it gives us the greatest advantage. If I'm a server, I want to start focusing on placing the ball out wide and mixing up by placing it down a tee. So this would be my personal patterns and how I would approach this. If I'm then thinking about my rally, what are, how, how do I want to rally? I want to think about my strength. So I like my forehand. Most players don't like their backhands and some do, but for the most part, my forehand's probably better than the backhand. So I'm thinking of rally situations to put me in an inside out forehand to their backhand. These are the patterns I'm looking for. From here, I'm looking for my opportunity where the ball lands in the middle of the court from my inside out forehand, and then I get an opportunity to either go back to their backhand and use that as approach to get in to start thinking about finishing the point, or I can run them to the inside out ball and position myself for another opportunity, or even follow that forward depending on how good I feel about that. And then obviously when I get to the net, I have to choose if the ball below the net or is it above the net, or am I, am I getting an overhead that allows me then to finish the point. When you have this much clarity about what you're gonna do, you breathe the sigh of relief about what you're supposed to do in a match because you're no longer guessing or trying to figure out on the fly. And yes, there are times where you're gonna to have to change it up a little bit, but these are the general game plans I almost always use when I'm playing, and I just adjust my opportunity to maybe focus on an opponent's weakness a little bit more. But I bet most players don't have this kind of scrutinized game plan about what they're gonna do. And this is why they're not having the same amount of success. So here's what I want for you. I want you to go and write down these four different phases on a sheet of paper and write down different things you can do, different things you like to do. Now the other side of it is like in each phase, what are things maybe you don't do so well? Maybe you don't have a great backhand. So in the rally phase, how can I avoid that? How can I limit that? Maybe um, you don't like uh, your serve and you're like, man, my serve's weak and I get attacked and the return is gonna hit me you know, with, with the return. What do I need to do? You start thinking through those things through. So if, like, if that's the situation, I need to get a lot more first serves in so they can get a chance to look at my second serve. So you can really start breaking down things. The other nice thing about this is this. When you finish playing a match, you go through the, the four different phases of the point and say, where am I losing the point? Am I losing the point in my approach? Am I losing the point in the rally? Am I double faulting too much? And then this now, you can take this and go, hey, what do I need to practice on? Because so many times players walk out to the practice court and they don't know what they need to practice. And they're like, oh, I'm just gonna randomly practice. You, by playing matches, can get feedback about what's going on and what's working. And then you can go back to your practice sessions and improve that. So guess what? You start getting better in the matches. And by breaking down your points and how you're playing and how you're practicing this way, you constantly have a goal to improve certain avenues or parts of your game that can start improving you playing in the match, that start improving the wins you get. Because wins and winning matches is just about breaking things down and doing things better in your matches. It's not gonna magically happen, but you can only do that if you have clarity on what you're trying to do. Now, the last thing you need to do is have control over the ball. And the only way you can do that is by watching this video to tell you how to have more control over your forehand and your backhand. Because if you don't have control over that, you can't do anything else.